from the depths instant tutorial. This is Eric and this is your one-stop shop for fuel engines. We covered it before on instant tutorials, but we had a weird texture pack, so I think we assume it's outdated. So we're just gonna cover everything a little bit quickly, uh, a little bit more compactly in one video. Everything you need to know. This is a really tiny bad engine producing 109 power. Uh, engines, they basically burn materials, they use materials and make power. As you can see in the lower right corner of the screen, we have the power metric. Now, to be able to use materials, they'll need fuel tanks. The fuel tanks, they are basically converting materials to fuel as we go. So the more engines you have, the more fuel tanks you have. Only having this tank will basically make 100 fuel per minute. Each tank adds 50 fuel extractable per minute and a vehicle has 50 by default. So if you have a really small engine, like on this craft right now, you don't actually need a fuel tank. You can see it works fine with a material box here. The handy thing about fuel tanks is they will tell you how many materials are extractable as fuel per minute. And under that you'll see an estimate of how many fuel tanks you are estimated to require. If you have two little fuel tanks for your vehicle, you will see the fuel access bar down in the lower right corner go down to zero. One thing that's good to know is that when a fuel tank is destroyed, it will create a fire. If you have a naval vessel, it's a good idea to have your fuel tanks under the waterline, because then the fire will spread much less. So protect your fuel tanks or, or at least don't place them inside the AI core so that it will burn down whenever they catch fire. To see the stats of an engine and to see how it works under full load, we'll need to test it. Here is a big injector engine. What we can do to test the engines is to use engine power. Go to defense and find the signal jammer ECM. You can place it down anywhere. This will use a lot of engine power. So we're gonna drag this up to 20,000 and add another one. So we're sure we're using more power than we can produce. The next step is to go to resources and to fuel boxes. Here we can see how many fuel boxes we'll need to add. If you add one, we can see it goes down. We'll need to add more. We are estimated to require about 2000. You'll just add slash remove fuel boxes until your materials extractable per minute as fuel is higher than the estimate requirement. If you run out of materials, just hover over a fuel tank or material box and press Q a couple of times in designer mode. In the lower right corner, you can see we're using all the engine power we produce, which is the goal for this test. Now we can see how many materials per second this thing is burning. We can see how much power it generates also, which is 16,500. If you press Q on the engine, you can go into it and we can see some stats. For example, we can look at stable output, 100%, we can see power per material. This is 430. The higher power per material we have, the more efficient the engine is. So this is a stat you will want to look at when trying to build efficient engines. The fuel generator is the main block of an engine. The arrow indicates in which way we can build the engine. Crankshafts are the pinnacle of the engine. This is where the cylinders can be built around. The cylinders generate the power on the engine. They can be built all around the crankshaft. To generate power, you either need carburetors or injectors. Carburetors can connect on five different surfaces, only excluding the top. Injectors can only connect to two cylinders. If you have carburetors or injectors on an engine without having any type of cooling, they will overheat. To make them not overheat, you have two options which you can combine. You have pipes, exhaust pipes, or you have radiators which you can place on cylinders and crankshafts and even connect to each other to provide some type of cooling. Each cylinder will tell if they are overheated. On each cylinder you can see how much power they generate. This one with a carburetor generates 122. Same with this one. This one without any carburetor or anything will only generate 15. This one with the injector will generate 436. You can see injectors produce a lot more power than carburetors. But carburetor engines can be made to be super efficient. The most power dense engine are injector engines. However, injector engines are really easy to overheat. 
you can see it's not enough with having one exhaust per cylinder when you're having an injector engine. You'll either need to add more than one exhaust per cylinder or you have to have a lot of radiators. Now radiators are a one-time cost that will cool the engine but you can need a lot of them if you have no exhausts and they're pretty expensive. When you have too few fuel boxes it looks like this. Add more fuel tanks it even says. Very easy to understand. To make injector engines cheaper but cooler you'll need to utilize some smart plumbing techniques. Exhausts can namely be combined to one single output. So we have connections all around this little engine and we can drag them out to this thing. Now each cylinder has at least two outputs and that will make sure the engine doesn't run too hot. To make it run even cooler you can add radiators in the spaces that are left. In case you need to use your engines to charge a battery for example, then you go in here and you set battery charge fraction to whatever you want. If you set it to 1, it will only work with charging batteries if batteries can be charged. Under the priority of the engine, you will set priority to 1 for the engines that are most efficient, 0 for the neutral engines and minus 1 for the least efficient engines. The engines with priority 1 will be used before the engines of priority negative 1 or 0. This is an injector engine. It's the least efficient engines of them all. It will be set to negative 1 so that this engine is only used if it really has to be used. This is useful when you are having several engines. If you are only having one engine on your craft this doesn't matter. Now we're instead going to move on to a lower power but higher efficiency engine. A carburetor engine. Now the carburetor can be placed under five different directions as said. They can also share superchargers. The superchargers will make this engine more efficient. So here we have a pretty compact design and we can even add superchargers there and there. But it needs of course more cooling. So we'll set up some nice exhaust plumbing. And remember the more connections you have per cylinder the more cooling they will provide. If you really can't have exhausts on your build you can of course spam radiators all over the place. There we have it. Everything is connected together and all the gases can escape in these two pipes. As you can see the power per material is now 465 compared to the injector engines 400. Now this is not much better at all especially considering that the power of this engine is only 1800 and the injector engine is at 3800. This is because the uh, supercharger engines only really are efficient at lower RPMs. So what you can do is to lower the RPM to something around 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 up to 0 0.5. Around that range is recommended. When we do that you can see that the power per material has gone up to 820. Under this little stable output chart you can see the power per material at different RPMs. 25, 50, 100. So if we want it to be efficient we'll need to limit the RPM. But it's a big difference. This engine has doubled the efficiency of this engine. So it will take more space but having efficient low RPM engines can be a really good long time investment for slow ships and stationary forts and something that's not in combat and doesn't have to be compact in engine power. For stationary efficient engines it can be a good idea to add the radiators because as you can see they lower the uh, temperature and lower temperature means higher efficiency for the engines. So all the engines will actually be more efficient having a couple of uh, radiators but the radiators of course have a high price tag so use them in moderation. Power per material goes up. If we remove it power per material goes down. If you're making some pretty exotic engines there is an adapter and the adapter can be used if you want to have cylinders on a little bit of extended 
or moved away configurations like this. Well, but there is another option, of course, and that is having several engines. Then you don't need to limit the RPM. Make sure your inefficient engine is set to priority negative one and set the efficient engine to priority positive one. Now you just need to make sure that the efficient engine is large enough. Then let's say that our standby cost for this vehicle is 1,500 or just chilling about. That will mean that this engine is producing 1,500 power exactly and not anything more. And even though we set the uh, max RPM to one, you can see this is still running super efficiently because we are not requesting more power. And this is the real beauty with fuel engines. They will only produce as much power as you need, so they can be super efficient since they are so adaptable. And that basically means that this engine, even though it exists, doesn't even take one material per second. It's not even used. But then let's say we get into combat and we are suddenly requesting 7000 power because our shields are requesting it and the weapons and all. Well, then this engine will kick in and save the day. So what engine can we use if we want high RPM and high efficiency at the same time? Well, like in the real world, it's really a waste of materials to throw away exhaust. Yeah, indeed, it can be reused into turbo engines. So we have turbochargers. They can only be attached to carburetors. To make turbo engines, you'll need to use the turbochargers. The turbochargers are one of the most finicky systems in the game. So what you need to do here is the simplest way is to use the cylinder turbo charger. And this little hairdryer thing connects on the top to the carburetor. And this little base part is connected to the cylinder. And they are in two configurations as well and get mirrored automatically. These of course need to be connected up to an exhaust system, preferably a combined output for simplicity. Just like that. Now the exhaust is leaving here and it's connected up to all of the turbochargers. Now in the turbochargers you can see that this engine has a power per material of 644, which is pretty decent. If you look at this one it's again 400. So it's much more efficient even though we just have these simple ones here. So basically the exhaust from the cylinder is getting funneled into these turbochargers, uh, going back into the carburetor back and forth in some way and out there. Very handy. Uh, however, do keep in mind that if you add exhausts to an engine with this setup and not having them all connected up to turbochargers, you will kind of make the power per material efficiency uh, lower. So don't do that. Now we have the excellent opportunity to look a little bit more at exhausts. Exhausts are really weird. And if you block the exhaust like this, you can see not externally vented cooling reduced to 50%, which is a big hit for engines. So you'll have to make sure they are externally vented. Externally vented can mean some different way. Like for example, if this is the hull, what you can do is you can go to the exhaust and install a hull pipe like this. And now the exhaust is being delivered on top of the hull. The other option is to at the exterior of your hull, go to air, go to ducts and have a duct instead. This will let the exhaust through. Now exhausts are weird. It doesn't matter how far away you're blocking the output. It can be 2000 meters and it's still not externally vented. So just make sure that it's a one X one meter line that goes out forever. And that line can't be blocked for the exhaust. It's very weird, but it is what it is. Now the cylinder turbochargers are a little bit easier to work with. You can of course have max four per cylinder if you really cram them in there. Uh, and if you have more, you will have more efficiency. Then there is the other option of the carbureted turbochargers. This is one of the more complex things in the game, but they're pretty cool so you can use them. And they work kind of the same way, except you can't connect them up directly to the cylinder. 
they will have to be in a configuration like this. So one of the sides are connected up to the carburetor and the other side will decide one will be an input and one would be an output. I'm just moving some stuff around here. You can see the hard drive part going there. So now we have two of them per carburetor here. And the more you can fit in, the more efficient it will be. Now, what we'll need to do here is to have exhausts from the engines. And we're sealing them like that. We have exhaust all around the cylinder just to make it as cool as possible. And then you can see we have the exhaust popping in here. So now we have just like the cylinder turbocharger, the same way basically we're using 1.25 out of 6 exhaust per one of these. So the power per material is basically exactly the same for the previous engine. Now why do you even use the uh, carbureted turbocharger then? So the exhaust was colliding a little bit with the engines here so I just uh, aimed them upwards. These are only for decoration. So what we can do is to make this a lot more efficient. And what we basically can do is we can steal gases from other engines and reuse them to make this engine more efficient. So we can basically Frankenstein together some engines here and make the end result very, very efficient. So when we connect this thing, we're using all of the gases from the inefficient injector engine. We're funneling them through here and connecting them up here. Now you can see that the carbureted turbocharger here and here is using 6 out of 6. This means that the power per material is much boosted. You can see that on the smoke too. This one didn't have the connection, so we'll make sure to connect these. And now these ones are also getting 6 out of 6 exhausts pressure, which makes the power per material for this engine 811, which is even better than the current configuration of the efficient engine. So there you go, that's why you may want to use the carbureted turbocharger, even though it can be a hassle to set up. If you want to take that to its extreme, here is my Centauri trash bin. This basically has an input on the green and an output on the red. This is basically a max efficiency recycling. I connected up four of these on each of the carburetors to make sure they recycle a lot of that power and give us a well-deserved power bonus. Well, that's pretty nice, I'd say. I'm sure this is a little longer than I want my instant tutorials to be, but I really crammed everything in there. Huge thanks for watching until the end, and if you want to help the channel out, the biggest thing you can do to help me right now is to subscribe to the Gmodist and the Relaxism channel. Because right now, YouTube is getting all the ad revenue because uh, I can't monetize them because I don't have 1000 subscribers on any of the channels yet. So I'll need to get that and uh, then YouTube have to start sharing with me, which would not give me a lot, but will give me some extra money every month and that would be great. So please support, subscribe to those channels uh, if you haven't already. Thanks for watching Instant Tutorials. This is Eric signing out from a not so instant tutorial.